Welcome, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Glad everyone is here on this cold but beautiful day. Amen. So, if you'll join me on the back of your bulletin for some announcements. Uh, as uh, you most all are aware, we're running a shelter right now for warming shelter for the homeless. So, uh, that's why I'll focus uh, this morning's announcements. Uh, volunteers are needed to help work the shelter and uh, welcome our neighbors and take care of them. As far as needs, uh, we need gloves in all sizes, undergarments for men and women. On the men's side, the medium and the large is what more we need. Uh, have some of the lar extra large and double X large, but uh, long, sleeve, long sleeve t shirts and hoodies would be nice. Uh, today at 1 p.m. there's going to be some gathering to do kits for donations, put them together for hygiene kits and so forth. So if you can come out this afternoon at 1, uh, we'll be doing that. Let's see. Of course, if you want to have a time with uh, the pastor, you can schedule a chat and chew with him. And uh, anything else, pastor, this morning? Well, good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. I see y'all in worship this morning, and I just have a uh, super califragilistic exponential notion, is that the right word? Uh, <laughs> uh, a suspicion that today is going to be a great day. Mm -hmm. And I know I'm excited about today and what God's going to do in our service today. Uh, and uh, appreciate all of you for weathering the storm of life today in the cold to be with us in worship. Inside your bulletin, uh, as you know, we're beginning our capital campaign. And part of that capital campaign is us serving. So the first thing this month is we're going to focus on serving. And so today is uh, one part one of our commitment Sunday. And I want you to fill out this card um, and see where God is leading you to serve in this church. So today, as we're going through service, I don't want you to fill out the beginning of the service. I want you to wait through the end of the service. I want God to talk to you the whole service. And I want God to speak to your heart on where is God leading you. 
As you know, this is our year of relaunching to our new church name, The Table at FCC, and we're getting ready to do some new and exciting things. So we want to add a praise band to service. We want to add uh, some different youth uh, aspects. We want to do a little, uh, uh, some new and exciting things here to add to our worship experience. And so we want you to be a part of that. Uh, maybe you want to be a greeter. We invite you to fill out this card and say, or oh, craft team, or what have you, and say, Pastor, this is where I want to serve. And there's a brown basket, the commitment basket, that's what I call it today, uh, that you put it in after service when we sing the hymn of response. I'm going to give you a few moments to make your selection and then to come up as God leads you to place it in the basket uh, for your commitment uh, here at First Christian Church. Amen? Amen. 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 So I'm so glad y'all decided to do that. The Lord leads you to serve at the table and to be a part of what God is doing here in the big city and the metropolitan area of Houston County, Ronald Robbins. So I'm just excited about that. So I hope you're getting excited already. That's why I put, I put it orange, so that's an excitement color. Amen. Amen. Get excited. That's uh, some uh, Florida colors. Amen. Yeah. Tennessee. There you go. Oh, so Tennessee. Amen. So I, I want y'all to see that this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I lost a lot of friends. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you stuck that one in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are any other announcements from the floor? If not, if you'll join me in our choral call to worship, our God is great. The words are printed in the bulletin. <laughs> come to hear the good news. So we we'll hear the voice of God calling us the of the People of God take courage in the loving, sustaining presence of God. We are here to find strength and courage, to find faith and hope, to lean on the everlasting and loving arms of God. Amen. Please join me now in the hymn of praise, number 349 in your hymnal. My Jesus, I love you. Let's stand together.
prayer. Holy Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let us seek you all the days of our lives and plant ourselves in your presence. By gathering today, may we learn your truth and enjoy fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. May we come with open eyes to see your glory and unfiltered ears that we may hear you, or hear you speaking to us today. But most of all, may we open, have open, open and faithful hearts, guided by your words that lead us to do the works of love and deeds of kindness, done to bring glory to you, O Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to be your hands and your feet to our neighbors who are suffering from the lack of a place to call home. We have seen your blessings pour out on us this, in the short term, but we humbly ask that you bring forth long-term partners to join with us in this new ministry. For we know that we cannot do this alone, but only through your grace can we truly carry out this new ministry. Help us to come together in one accord aligned with your will, such that we may follow your path, not our own. Be with us during this time of worship, and may you be exalted in this place. Now let us lift our voices together as one body of believers as we pray the prayer. Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. good to see y'all in worship this morning and uh, I pray that you're excited as I am about worship today and I'm thankful for what God is doing and I missed it what God is doing in our service today and what a beautiful day it is in the neighborhood right here at the table at First Christian Church and so good to see y'all I tell you I'm just thankful for today and excited about what God is doing uh, in our midst. Amen. If, when those of you who came in a little uh, uh, late because you were thawing out this morning uh, I'm just messing with you. Amen. There is an orange card in your bulletin that we invite you on today to make you a commitment where God is leading you to serve. Now, some of you say, oh, pastor, I don't done my years in church and done my years of service. Well, as always, may I remind you, until we say ashes to ashes, dust to dust over your body, God is not through with you yet. Amen. 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 And so there's still room for you to serve, whether it's in prayer, whether it's in some other area that you think God is leading you in. We invite you to choose an area that God is uh, calling. That's why I say don't fill it out until the end of service because I want God to speak to your heart because I'm going to be praying the whole service that God will speak to your heart that you'll find somewhere where you fit in. And I want every person in here to have a place to serve. Don't sit there and try to hide at home. God ain't going to let you because I'm going to pray you don't let you. Amen. Uh, that's, a, that's a mean prayer. Amen. That's, I just want to sleep at home. Well, while you're sleeping at home, there might be an area you can serve. Um, while you're in the recliner, you could be on a prayer team uh, somewhere. There's something that you can do, and I want you to be in that. Then maybe there might not something. It may not be on this card where there's plenty of room on the back, and you say, "God, this is where I mean, Pastor, this is where God is leading me." It might be something creative and new, and I would love for you to put that on the back there and let me know because that don't mean we have all the answers. You might have a vision that we haven't seen yet, and God put it in your heart. So I invite you to share with that uh, and put that on the back for us today in service. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, as always, you know, the joy. You know, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they, I, they told me, they said, Pastor, um, I'm really a lot of religious person. I said, I'm not either. I said, I'm a Christian. I love God. And I said, I just follow Jesus. That's all. So I don't want to be a religious person. I want to be a, a Jesus follower. That's all. And they said, well, I don't go to church, and I just don't think church is important. I said, well, that's your opinion. That's good. I said, but you know what? 
I said, let me tell you about church for me. Church is a joy of having connection that I can come in a church where imperfect people are and my imperfect self can come and join with imperfect people and we can connect together, pray together, encourage each other. And you know, many of you who probably be isolated alone, you realize loneliness is not the best place to be, is it? But when you find a family of God, you know, every church ain't perfect. Every church don't have it together, but there is a church that's made just designed for you that God wants you to be a part of that you can connect with and grow with. And so what I love about our church is that we pause to connect together in prayer. And I love that every Sunday we get to take a moment and share our joys and concerns with each other and be able to lift and encourage each other. And what's so good about it is a judgment-free zone that we can sit there and say our prayer, what our prayer request is, and then everybody looks at it and go, wow, Lord, bless them and Lord have mercy on them. That's what's joyful about that that we can share together. And then some of you will share your testimony, not alone, but just a quick sentence of what the Lord has done for you or what he's done and answer prayer. And we get to shout glory, hallelujah, that God has done the work for us. And I don't know about you, but I get excited when I hear somebody testimony because that means God is alive and well. Amen to that. And I don't know about you, but I don't serve a dead God. You know, Confucius is dead. Muhammad is dead. All the mother ones, they Buddha is dead. But Jesus is not, and you ought to shout about that, that God is still alive. Amen. Amen. And he's working in our midst. I'm glad about that. Amen. That was a Pentecostal moment right there. Amen. 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 Y'all going to catch Jesus after a while. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> but God is alive, and I love him. And if you ain't figured that out, I'm telling you, he's doing something great. All right. So there may be some joys and concerns you would like to share with us this morning. You know, I, I try to make y'all laugh sometimes. I want to see you smile. I know you're behind your mask, some of you and some of you not. But I, those who ain't behind the mask, good, so I can see you smile. Those behind you, let me see the cheekbones raised sometimes. Amen. <laughs> you ought to come to church happy sometimes, you know. And if you if you come to the table at first, you ought to make sure you leave happy. Amen. Amen. Because God is wonderful. And the Bible said laughter is a good medicine. Some of y'all need some medicine this morning. Amen. Some of y'all look like y'all constipated, sucking on this. <laughs> you need some laughter this morning. Amen. Well, that church supposed to be serious. You must don't know God. Amen. <laughs> look, he made a beaver and a platypus. I mean, a be what's a beaver and a duck together and called a platypus. God is funny. Amen. Amen. He made us. He's very funny. Amen. Amen. So God is good. Any joys and concerns that you would like to share with us this morning? Yes. Jess texted me this morning, our daughter Jess. Um, she doesn't know the circumstances around it, but one of her good friends from high school apparently passed away. I'm not sure how recent. His name is, which means he's about 27 or 28 years old. So that's always a tragedy in my book. Uh, his name is Darkwell Gooch. So prayers for his family. Any others? Yes. A friend I work with up at the Habitat for Humanity, Mike Green, his wife just passed away. Mm -hmm. Mike Crane, Mike Green, his wife. I'm not, yeah, I can't for life remember what he was anymore. Mrs. Mrs. Green, I'm Amen. Any others? Yes. I had all my chess results come back in a good life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. They or uh, her niece and family uh, experienced a fire in Colorado and lost everything, and so now they're rebuilding. So we praise God for that rebuilding right. process. Amen. Had a lot of uh, people helping. Well, praise God for that. That's even family of God. I love it. Any others? Yes. My co-worker Amy lost her husband, Kevin Williams, to esophageal cancer after about a four-year battle. Well, definitely be praying for him. I have prayed. Yes. I had five pages of 
praise yeah, the Lord. Yeah, Hallelujah. Don't get no better than that. We love a good praise report on that. Amen. See, ain't no sick folks. And I'm a cancer survivor. Amen. She's Look excited at this. about that. Amen. Yeah. Praise God for that. Now, then I see Megan. Oh, where I work, I work in a tax office, mm -hmm. and we've had COVID just ravage our office mm -hmm. here lately. So just, oh, and of course, tax season just started, and worst time possible to just keep us in your thoughts as we try and get everyone back in the office and working. Amen. Just for praying for y'all, y'all said it in there. Amen. I saw what's on there, we'll go get that. I've got one more. That's from Melissa. She, last summer, baked a cake for one of her friend's daughter's baptism. And that seemed to have spurred an at-home business. Yeah. And she has just recently gotten a, a logo and has set up an Instagram page. So as she, and she's doing all, going through all the hoops of what she has to do as a military wife to have a, a, an at-home business, and dealing with twins. Mm -hmm. So friends for her as she navigates this new business of our homemade. Ah, uh, our homemade. Did she get that name from the baby. <laughs> well, Hillary, you know, Hillary, it's her last name. Oh, okay. I said she should be oh. I thought she was saying the baby's hollow so much. <laughs> <laughs> so excited about your new job so we start a new job together tomorrow amen yeah, amen so y'all pray for me lord jesus i'm switching from high school to middle school i think i'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> and i'll be in charge of student engagement and discipline at times so i oh lord jesus so if i come in next sunday like a zombie you know why even no i think it's gonna be good i'm so excited so praying for you janetta and your new transition i'll hush jp Amen. <laughs> Any, oh, I, uh, did I say John? Yeah, um, I'd just like to praise the outpouring of support we've had in the community for the uh, ministry we're doing, <clears throat> you know, with the uh, warming center. Mm -hmm. It's just been phenomenal. It has. I've watched it every day this week, and it's uh, been very rewarding. Yeah. And I think. You know, they keep telling us we're a blessing to them, our, our neighbors that are staying with us. And I keep reminding them they're a blessing to us as well. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. and I'm telling y'all, you know, some folks are like, oh, is that going to cost us money and all this stuff? Listen, every day somebody's been bringing donations. So I think likely at least cover for two months. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> How people have been donating. And I tell you, I. If we didn't know we need to clean out the room, we did <laughs> this week, amen. Because yeah. we have loads of stuff. And as I said, I told y'all when we trust the vision that God gives us, God's gonna make the provision. And God has blown our mind this week. When you be obedient to God, and I know some are like, oh, we didn't know about it, I didn't vote on it, all this stuff. Some things you just don't you vote on, you just do because God say do. You know, and you just do because God is leading us. And look what God is doing. And blessing people out. And listen, we don't lead some people to Jesus. Did y'all know that? You didn't awesome. know that, did you? Amen. Yeah. We've led some folks to Jesus. They've been asking us about the Bible, and we've been sitting at the table witnessing to them. I'm telling you. And there's some young folks back there. Listen, they've been helping us clean the church and <laughs> fix up rooms. So we got, we, we, oh, they just blessing us. I tell you. And they came today and said, We're going to paint today. I said, I forgot to paint, but we will soon. I haven't painted the rest of the week. God is just doing a great, and we'll get to encourage them, get to lift them up. So God is good. And I'm just thankful for that. And guess what? If they didn't know our church name, they know it now. It's all over the news and internet and everything. So uh, they get to see what I get to see every week. A loving church that loves God and what? Loves Jesus. Oh, people. People. Ooh, God. That's good right there. I tell you. And guess what? They get to experience that, that, that we love them and there's nothing they can do about it. They get to experience that. And because of you and your faithfulness and your heart for God, wow. Look what you're doing. And they're going to always remember that. I want you to remember that. I tell you. So if nothing else stirs your heart, yeah, let that stir your heart. We are loving God's people. And what a great gift that is. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we on Facebook Live, so I can't say what I want to say because I don't want them to get around. <laughs> uh, but I, 
when we turn the cameras off, I'll tell you a little story. Hey, God bless you. Well, let's prepare our hearts and minds and lift up these prayer requests to Almighty God. Would you join me as we pray? God, you are good. And Lord, we're thankful for your goodness. And the hymn writer uh, penned it so beautifully. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Lord, we just thank you that you're faithful to us. You're kind to us. You're just to us. And Lord, uh, this week, if I haven't learned anything else, it could have been the other way. But Lord, you spared our lives. You gave us another chance. You kept us in our right mind. You gave us good health and strength. You provided for us. And now we get the chance to provide for others. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings and joys that you give us. And we just praise you for that this morning. So this morning, as we gather in worship, we come with thanksgiving and praise on our hearts. We come with joy in our spirits this morning because you are mighty. You're good, you are just, and Lord, we just love you. We love you that you forgive us of all of our sins and unrighteousness. We love you that you cared about us, that even in the cold, we are able to warm up in you with your Holy Spirit, but also with the joy of a heater in a building. We just thank you for creations and all those things in our lives that make life better for us, that we sometimes take for granted. And so, Lord, thank you for everything. Thank you for life, health, and strength. And as the Bible says, we have our being. And Lord, we thank you for having our being this morning. And we thank you that we can call you Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Elohim, El Shaddai, the great I am, the way, the truth, and the light. You're the, as my great grandma say, a nail fashioned in a sure place, can't be moved, can't be shaken, can't be destroyed. You are everything and mighty to us, and we thank you for that. So Lord, we come this morning because we know you're mighty God. Because we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly more, I love this part, than we can ask or think or even comprehend. Lord, we come to you as a God that hears us when we pray. And so there's some things on our heart that concerns us. But first, we thank you for the joys that were shared this morning. Joys of good test results and blood work. Joys of families starting new lives and new places and with new things and the way people connected with them. Thank you, Lord, for new jobs and new career opportunities that you give us. And we thank you for allowing us to provide shelter for people. And so because you're a good God, the God we realize if you bless us that way, you can do it another way. As we say every Sunday, there's no secret that what you can do, what you've done for others, you can do for others us too, Lord. And so we thank you for that, that these joys, we can share the testimony of the goodness of God and that others will hear it and be enlightened uh, by it. Lord, there are some concerns in our heart that because we know you're a prayer answering God and that you're a miracle worker, we lift these requests to you. We pray for the Gooch family today. We pray, Lord, for the friends and families that are affected by that death. We pray for the Crane family, Lord, who uh, lost their loved one as well. We pray um, for the Williams family, Lord. We lift them up to you today that, God, we pray for these three families that you will let them know earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. I pray you surround them with love, surround them with peace, and let the memories be healing for their lives, I pray in Jesus' name. We pray for all those uh, co-workers that are facing COVID in our jobs everywhere. We pray, God, for protection within our jobs for us as well as them. We pray for healing for those who've been affected by COVID. And we pray, Lord, that you'll guide them and strengthen them in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for new business ideas and new opportunities. But we do know with new business and new opportunities comes a lot of stress, a lot of weight. And so we pray for Melissa today and any others that may start a new business or have businesses. We pray their strength among the busy life that they already have with raising children or supporting families or being caregivers. We pray today in Jesus' name that you would bless them, give them strength, give them courage to keep on going after the dream that you have given them. So, Lord, we just praise you today. And we praise you for every person on the side of my voice this morning. We pray that the favor of God be over their lives. Every person sitting in this sanctuary watching live this morning, we pray, God, that you would touch them in their coming, and their going, through their lying down, they rising up, through their labor, through their leaving, through their laughter, through their tears. I pray, God, you will be God in their life. And God, as we leave this place today, we pray we will leave here saying, I felt Jesus, and my life will, ever, will never be the same. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for being present with us. And we praise you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, uh, after prayer, it's an exciting thing to know the goodness of God through prayer, but also the goodness of God at the table, that we get to feast at his table together to think about how God, through Jesus Christ, 
sacrificed his life for us, gave his only begotten son for us, and to give us life anew in him. And so today, I invite you now to let you know you are welcome at Christ's table. And as we prepare to receive the elements of Jesus' body and blood, all those symbolism, but also signs of hope, signs of joy, signs of miracles in our life that we can remember the words that was penned by the hymn writer, pierces in the heart. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the sacrificial blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the sacrificial blood of Jesus. He didn't have to do it. Y'all know that, right? I hope you don't. I hope you remember that he didn't have to do it. Listen, I don't think a lot of us would die for anybody, but he did it for us. Oh, what a great joy! So when I see that grape juice, I say, "Woo!" Not only does grape juice taste good, I think about he's sweet. I know, Amen. That he gave himself for us. So as we prepare our hearts to meditate and prepare our hearts to receive the elements, let's sing our communion hymn, one of my favorites. So I might get excited with this one. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, and all. Let's stand together as we sing with the and boys all four verses of this great hymn of the church. life for us. The Bible said he laid down his life that no man can take it away or even uh, give it back. He can do that. Only he can. And what joy. You know, Abraham, the Bible said he believed God so much that it, it was counted for him in righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. We have a friend in Jesus. You know, Tolstoy gave us a great theology. 
You got a friend in me? Y'all love that song, but I love that song. It's on my playlist every day, and I, I turn it to a gospel song. Amen. <laughs> I've got a friend in Jesus, and I'm so glad about it. And he gave us, is that a friend? He bought me the best Christmas gift. He gave his life for me. That's the best gift, best birthday gift, best Father's Day gift, best Mother's Day gift, best any gift, retirement gift. Amen. He gave us the best gift, through, and, and, and I thank God for that. He gave his life for us, and all he says is receive that gift. So today when you come to the table, I invite you to receive that gift and remember in your heart. So on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he given thanks, he gave to a disciple, said, here's a gift for you. Take and eat, feast on it in your heart. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he said, receive this gift. My blood poured out for many for the remissions of sin. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. And oh, what a joy the blood came streaming down. And I saw all my sins, all my guilt, all my shame. His blood poured and washed it and washed it and washed it. And because he washed it, I have new life in him. And I can feast at the cup of salvation. Praise be to God. Lord Jesus, our Christ who saved us, we thank you for the nourishment you have prepared for us this morning. May we approach this table with gratitude in our hearts for your sacrifice and may this communal action draw us close to you and increase our desire to abide in you. We ask that you bless this bread and drink to all who are partake of them. May our actions help keep us connected to you and increase our desire to be your disciple, willing to witness and proclaim the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Well, friends, um, because of COVID protocol, we're going back to the prepackaged elements, and I hope everyone received one. And if you did not, we'll be glad, one of our deacons elders will be glad to serve you one at your seat. And we're going to join together as one body of, of faith and family of God together as we feast on these elements together. So I invite you now to receive your elements, and uh, if you'll go ahead and peel back the bread, we'll prepare our hearts and minds to receive together. And as we're preparing, I pray that the Lord will pour out His Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and to make them be for us the body of, and blood of Christ, that we may become the body of Christ in Jesus' name. I invite you now to take the bread that symbolizes His body and let's feast in our heart together. The cup of salvation. Let's take and feast in our heart together. Thank you, Lord, for this gift. And may we receive it in our hearts with thanksgiving. And Lord, I pray that we don't take it for granted, but we'll live out the joy of resurrection through you. In Christ's name, amen. amen. You know, and oftentimes in service, people always wonder why we take communion and then do the offering right after. Well, because Christ became a gift for us, here's a great one of a way of responding back to him to give a gift to him. Now, some say, oh, boy, y'all do that so you can take up money because the church always want money. Well, you're right. We need money because we want to keep doing ministry. You see, the money that you give helps us to do stuff that's back there. The money that you give helps us to keep you warm in the wintertime. Amen. The money that you give helps us to do a blessing box, helps us to help folks who come here and say, we need a Kroger's card or we need help with our light bill or something. Your gifts don't go to just any old thing. It goes to some great things. Your gift helps us to do vacation Bible school this Sunday. I mean, this uh, not this summer, this summer. Amen. <laughs> Letting y'all know early we're doing vacation Bible school. Amen. <laughs> because of your faithfulness to God, we get to bless other families. And here at the table at First Christian Church, we serve. We don't come to just sit at the table and eat. We all some come to serve. Amen. Amen. That's a great way to put it, right? We come to serve. And so today I invite you now to prepare your gifts to Almighty God to share together that we can continue to share not only at the table for us, but to share others and give them a seat at the table together. So I invite you now to share your gifts. Amen.
stand together as we sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. gifts that we have received and I pray blessings on those who have sowed into the uh, kingdom of God here and those who didn't have to give I pray you bless them with seed to sow in the future we thank you for it now and let it be uh, blessings for the vision and the ministry we do here in Christ's name amen, amen. please be seated amen we make sure y'all have a lot of exercise here so you won't go to sleep during service amen <laughs> <laughs> amen it's so good to see y'all in worship and I'm excited about uh preaching now as we continue our sermon series this month uh, we've been doing a sermon series called reset finding a uh, renewed normal amen uh, I think it's important that after the, uh, that, well we're still in the pandemic but during this pandemic and you know how we said uh, we started New Year's resolutions and we're getting our mind and heart right for the new year well I thought it would be appropriate to make sure we teach about things that we need to look at we talked about perspective and reality we talked about uh, response and uh, uh, reactions. We talked about uh, not forgetting, right? Uh, remembering uh, what God has done. And so today we're going to continue and end this sermon series on paradigm shift. Amen. And that's our topic for today. We're going to talk about a paradigm shift. Now, and next month we'll begin a new sermon series on the hymns of the church. We're going to talk about this is my story. I can't wait to preach about that. Amen. And I'm looking forward to talking about because y'all know I love hymns. Amen. And so then at the end of the month, we're going to be with first, we're going to be in first, uh, first Christian making and the table, we're going to come together and the healing experience going to do a hymn fest for y'all. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to sing some of the favorite hymns of the church. I'm excited about that. So make sure you look on the back of your bulletin for some dates on that. Amen. Uh, some stuff there for us. So uh, let's dive into our sermon. Our text is printed in our bulletin. And I invite you to share with me as I read the text and share with you what God has given for us in our service today. Hear now the word of God from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Hear the holy writ. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ Jesus. When Christ, who is your life, appeared, then you also will appear with him in glory. That's excitement right there. Amen. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways and in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourself of all things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language. Lord have mercy. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of the creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, whatever that next word, slave or free, but Christ is all and in all. I studied it, but I forgot it. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. I love that last verse. There's no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian. In other words, all of us belong in Christ Jesus. And I hope we remember that. White, black, Asian, Hispanic, yellow, brown, pink, purple, whatever color you decide to be. You all belong. God wants us to know that in those a couple of verses ahead of that, he said, listen, all of you did this. Some of you, all not some of you, all of us been angry. All of us been malicious. All of us been low down and dirty. He didn't say that. I'm just adding my translation. All of us messed up. But at the bottom, no matter what you are, you still belong. Amen. Amen. And that's a joy in that. 
I had to give that nugget. That wasn't in my sermon today. I give that nugget. Today, we talk about paradise. Should Lord bless this word. Let it be enriching for our lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin to say this morning is, how is God challenging your thinking? How is God challenging your thinking? You know, I thought about the scripture, so you think, so shall it be. How is God challenging your thinking? What they say, your thoughts become your actions sometimes? Uh, what's her name? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, uh, she wrote a book. I uh, can't think of Joyce Myers. She wrote a book that says, Thinking, Thinking. You know, Battlefield of the Mind. And one of the parts of that book is Thinking, Thinking. Some of us got some stinking thinking. You know, how is God challenging your thinking? Right? Uh, there is such a battle for our mind. If you don't believe me, just keep thinking for a little bit. You'll find out there's a battle in your mind. Some of y'all, even in service while I'm preaching, you just, woo, 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 thousand thoughts. Just like you ever seen uh, how they say a computer computes. It's always all these little thousands of thousand thoughts. When you've seen the matrix and all them lines with the numbers and stuff, that's our mind. It's just always, woo, 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 woo. Uh, always going. To, there's a battle in our mind. And can I tell you, Satan's target is our mind. His, and, and what he uses to get our line, his, his weapon for our mind is lies. He'll tell a lot of lies to you. And if you ain't careful, you'll believe those lies. Amen. Uh, uh, so if Satan can get to your mind, he can get to your heart. You can tell a lot about a person's heart. That means they've been lied to a lot. Because how they respond, you'll go, Woo, your heart is cold. Why do you think like that? Why do you act like that? The devil has lied to them somewhere and got them feeling the way they're feeling, and so it comes out of their heart. If he can get to your heart, your mind, he can sure get to your heart. So God's word challenges us always to renew our mind. Now, why does God keep saying this to us? You know, I've been saying this in every sermon. Renew your mind. Everywhere I'm looking on Facebook, renew your mind. Transform your mind. Be transformed in Christ Jesus. Let your mind be transformed. And we keep hearing this. Is, is God trying to say something? Yep. Yeah. He's talking clear. Renew our mind. If God told me to preach it, that means he's been talking to some of y'all. And he wants you to get this. He wants you to feel this. So evidently, you haven't got it yet. You need to renew your mind. I have been uh, mentioning this, and I, I, I want to get this. How in how is God challenging our thinking? He's been on me that, that for a while, really challenging my thinking. And I've been honest about that with everybody. There's some thoughts sometimes I go, whew, oh, I tell you, worry, doubt, fear, all that sits in the mind sometimes. You know, self-esteem self issues. Am I good enough? Am I a good pastor? Do they like my sermon? Do they like what I'm doing at church? Those thoughts come all the time. You know, oh, they didn't shake my hand this morning. They didn't like my sermon. You know, those thoughts come time, come in the mind sometimes. You, 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 or do my students like me? All this stuff. You always got something in the mind. Did I do enough? Was I this or that? You always got something in the mind. And so, how is God challenging our thinking? Maybe God is saying for this new year, in resetting for a renewed normal, is to have a paradigm shift. So here's the definition of paradigm shift: to change from one way of thinking to another. That's a deep definition, man. To change from one way of thinking to another. Woo. You know, but they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, with the right treats, you can, you know. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes we're stubborn and we don't want to change the way we think. What we decided is what we decided. I'm going to do what I want to do. And God says, how is that working for you? Amen, somebody. He wants us to have a paradigm shift in our life to change one way. Uh, and God will use seasons in our life to do that. God will put you through a, 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 a season of life and you're wondering, what in the world is happening? Because God has said, I'm changing you. I'm modifying you if you don't like the word change. I'm shifting you. That's a prophetic word right there. I'm shifting you from where you are to make you better. So I got to change your thinking. And sometimes God puts us in experiences to change our thinking. The concept that paradigm shift was birthed from Romans chapter 12. Listen to what it says. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you, transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That's in the Bible. Paradigm shift. We have got, you know, I call it social norm. If it's a trend, you know, we live in a world that everything's based off trend. You know, when they did that crate challenge and I saw all them folks doing it, I said, okay. 
You're going to fall down and break your behind your neck or somebody going to die. But everybody follows the trend so they can get likes and loves and go viral. And then God says, how is that working for you? Right. <laughs> so, so he said, don't uh, copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Be shifted to a new mindset. In Colossians, in our text, Paul says, and I, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase and I'm going to shrink it down so we won't be here all day with that. I don't have much time. I got look like I got 10 minutes. I told the kid, I told the kids that in church, I said, we get out at 11, so I need all of that. In the Colossian text, y'all got to give me five minutes after though. Uh, in the Colossian text, Paul addresses the Colossian church, and what I think is most is that uh, he comes first with a place of understanding, but he gives them a warning. If you look at the text and you just go with your Holy Ghost imagination and exegesis the text all the way through, here's what Paul says. He says, I understand that we all have a dark side. <laughs> yeah, we all have a dark side. Whoops, Pastor Chris, you just called us out. I sure did. I use Paul's words, not mine. So get mad at Paul. You know, Paul said, we all have a dark side. Don't you tell no fib about it. We all have a dark side. Amen. How do I know we have a dark side? Okay. Uh, let somebody cut you off in traffic. <laughs> Some words will come out. Amen. We all have a dark side. And Paul says, I understand that, but let me uh, be honest with you about it. I admonish you to caution yourself that that dark side can bear fruit in your future. So you got to be careful of that. You know, when I go to church, I'm sanctimonious. You know, I've got the Holy Ghost jogging together. I know every hymn. I know the doxology. I know the glory of poetry. I've got it all the time. I know the bylaws all the back. But that don't mean nothing. You can still have a dark side because the devil do come to church. Y'all didn't like that, did you? He sits with us. He'll talk with us sometimes. Amen. He'll get on the telephone with us sometimes and make our dark side come out. We'll start gossiping. That's what Paul said. Chris, Pastor Chris would say that. Paul said you'll start gossiping. You'll start slandering. Oh, oh. You'll start talking. Okay, let me put it in layman's terms. You'll start talking about folk. And then you'll be like what I like to say. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen, somebody. He said, let me admonish you. Be cautious of that because that dark side will bear fruit in your future. What goes around comes around. You know, there's a philosophical term of that karma. Yeah, yeah. Amen. It'll come around on you. If you don't believe me, keep living, as my great grandma say. And some of you already experienced it, but just don't want to own up to it. Freedom comes in truth. Amen. Amen. Be truth about it. So he writes to the Colossians, and Paul says, we must change not only our behavior, but we must be on guard against destructive emotions. Now, that's deep there, too. This is where God pricks us to a paradigm shift. Um, I heard a, a saying one time by Dale Carnegie. He says, when dealing with people, remember, you're not dealing with cre uh, creatures of logic, but creatures of emotion. Ooh, we live in a world that logic makes no sense to people when it needs to make sense. But emotions become, this seems to be the truth. And, and can I give you this nugget? Nugget? I want you to lean in and listen to this nugget. Y'all lean in for a moment. Y'all leaning in? Okay, I'm, I'm just watching. Feelings are not always bad. Did you hear that? Feelings are not always fact. The Bible is filled with stories of people who made some very poor decisions based on their emotions. You want me to call the roll? Okay, I will. Thank you for telling me. Jonah ran away from God and found himself in the belly of a whale. Samson let his raging emotions get the best of him. He lost his strength and his eyesight. David allowed his feelings of lust and desire to lead him to commit adultery and murder. Their emotions got him wrapped up. So the question I want to ask is that each of these examples are why we must be cautious and shift our thinking. So here's the question of the day. Who and what has shaped your mind? Who and what has shaped your mind? Has emotions, has people. Every one of us, whether we admit it or not, are the product of our training and our experiences. We tend to see things the way we see them because someone else saw it that way or the experiences taught us that way. And it, sometimes emotions get up there and become a teacher and it don't need to be our teacher. You know, some of us let anger come up in us and then we get revenge because anger say, get them back. And, you know, my grandma say, you got to be careful because some folks will use prayer as a revenge. 
Lord, get them. Take care of them, Jesus. They hurt my feelings. So you can do your by your words say, vengeance is mine, thus says the Lord. You know, that's a malicious prayer, and that becomes a prayer. You got to be careful of that. That's not how God works. How are you going to ask God to give you grace and mercy? Somebody must need this this morning because it's ain't my notes. <laughs> how are you going to ask God for grace and mercy and you can't extend grace and mercy? Ooh, that's a deep thought. All right, here we go. So uh, every negative experience pr uh, produces a fruit for our thoughts in our life. Maybe that's why some of us have become nonchalant or cynical. It's, maybe that's why, because we have made it our coping mechanism. We've allowed our emotions to dictate a lot. And you and here's what I love for it. But that's just the way I am. And God is saying, how is that working out for you? Well, it's protecting me. Is it really? It makes me feel better. Is it really? Is that saying, this is just who I am? I want to know the fruit from that. Because Is that working? If that's just the way I am. Ooh, the Lord must be working this morning. Today, may I suggest God is saying, let God renew your heart and mind of those places and people that caused you uh, harm and have you in a mindset that you are in. And, uh, and I'm sad to say, but it's true. Sometimes there are people who sit in our pews are the ones who claim to be Christians, but struggling with mental health and scared to admit that our minds need a new way of thinking. And it's okay. I told y'all this other week, therapy and Jesus is good. Need it. We all struggle with something. And it doesn't mean you're crazy. Can I free somebody today? It doesn't mean that you're crazy. It just means you need somebody to talk to. You need some help. And sometimes your husband, your wife ain't it. Sometimes you need to go outside because sometimes they're the one causing you. <laughs> they pain. Doesn't mean that they don't love you, but everybody cannot. Okay, this somebody needs this tomorrow. Everybody goes through seasons of life and you got to understand those seasons. Doesn't mean they love you any less. Doesn't mean they're crazy or being harmful. Sometimes they just need to get through it. And they need help. And sometimes us nagging and fussing ain't the way. Sometimes you got to say, I need to be encouraging. Sometimes I need to see what's going on because if this wasn't them before, what's happening? What's in their life is changing? Your friends, your family members, you need to assess that. Instead of getting mad, assess why they're acting this way. Maybe they need somebody to listen and not fuss. I just help somebody there. Amen. We got to be careful of that. So uh, we're not crazy. It's just God wants us to be free. Amen. All right. Uh, so, Pastor, you mean I don't have to be perfect? No. This is why I love to come to church because I can judge y'all imperfect people. Y'all missed that joke. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. But I get to be among imperfect people and I get to be un imperfect as well. We're all figuring this thing of life together. I don't care what degree you have, what school you went to. I don't care if you're retired or tired, just tired. I don't care what it is. We're all in this together trying to make life, and we're imperfect. But we get to do it together. I get to be with imperfect people. I get to work on me and come out of darkness. You get to work on you together. We get to uh, get out of our emotions and we can think clearly and see as God sees and hear what God says. That's important. All right. So here's some important notes to you how to have a paradigm shift. Number one, forgive the past. Forgive the past. Here's my definition of forgiveness. I think I've shared this for you. Forgiveness is memory without revenge. That's what some folks say. I want a deep definition of forgiveness. Oh, what does that mean? No, it's a simple. It's memory without revenge. I know what you did, but I choose not to get you back. I choose to extend grace and mercy. See, that's what God does to us. When he forgives us, he says, I give you grace and mercy. And I let you start anew. Amen. So you got to forgive the past. Forgive people. Uh, our emotional mind says, uh, get them back. Our emotional mind says you messed up. You can't fix it. Your past has hurt your future. That's a lie. God is not like that. God says I can make things all new for you. So don't allow that to th uh, dictate your future. Forgive your past. Forget, uh, forget those things that caused you and say, God, I want to start anew in you. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Forgive the experience that you didn't like. And I'll be honest with you, some of y'all need to forgive God. Not that he needs it. But you need it for your heart. God, I didn't get what I wanted. I'm sorry that I, I put that on you. And God is saying, just because I didn't give it to you is the reason why. 
It wasn't your time. Your mind wasn't prepared for that. Your heart wasn't prepared for that. Forgive yourself. Forgive the experiences. And here's this nugget. The negative experience is a valuable one if you learn from it. It's very valuable if you learn from it. Number two, pause and challenge your thoughts. Challenge your thoughts. Listen, it's a practice, but you must start getting to a place, as Paul says in Colossians 10, that you need to bring your mind captive to the Holy Spirit. That's important. Challenge your thoughts. My, listen, Chris, you're not thinking right. So, Father of God, in Jesus' name, chat, bring my mind captive. Bring my thoughts captive to the Holy Spirit. That's a prayer for the overthinkers right there. If you like me, I'm an overthinker sometimes. Many of us in here are overthinkers. We, we need to take a holy pause before your mind goes everywhere. Being an overthinker can be good and bad depending on your response. I overthink, but I learn to take a holy pause. I took Paul's advice in Philippians chapter 4. He says, think on these things, whatsoever true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So I have to pause and say, wait a minute, there's a negative thought here. So Lord, bring my mind to the captive Holy Spirit. What's good? What's true? What's faithful? What's honest? And when I think on those things, I have a paradigm shift. My mind changes. My heart changes. And I have to pause and choose to discipline my thoughts like God. And I get happy because God's word is a weapon for me. Ooh, that's good right there. His word becomes a weapon for my life to challenge me to think differently, to do things, and to change my ways. That's my final point for you this morning. Use God's word. You want a paradigm shift? Use God's word. Listen, when the devil tries to tell you lies, you get to, and try to get to your mind, shift that thing with God's word. God's word is one of the most powerful weapons we have to use, use against the enemy. You remember when Jesus used the words and uh, uh, when he told us in John 8, he says, if you abide in my word, you are true my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So when the devil tried to lie, because you abide in his word, the devil can't lie to you because you know the truth. And you can say, devil, I'm free. You can't lie to me with this because I know God's word. His word is truth. God's word is truth. And it has power not only to set us free from the lies of the enemy, but also has power to set us free from our misconceptions we may have about ourselves and about life. And, about, and we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The word of God is alive and it's active. You hear me now. Hebrews 4 and 12 tells us that. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It is alive for us. It is important for us, believers in Christ Jesus, to always remember the fact that the enemy also knows the word of God. And whenever we face attacks from him, you better use like Jesus did. Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> you got to apply that in your life and say, get behind me. You align the truth ain't in you. I know what God told me. I know what God said. It's in his word. And I can believe that. And I can come out of the wilderness. I don't have to be emotional. I don't have to feel what I feel. I don't have to be trapped in slavery in my mind. I can come out in Jesus' name. Get behind me, Satan. Some of y'all need to put that in your spirit this morning. When you go home and you walk in that house, Get behind me and say, I just got excited there. Because somebody needs that in their life. Go home and walk in that house. If it's messed up, say, get behind me and say, somebody needs that. I want to help you this morning. If your marriage messed up, get behind me and say, not talk to the husband or the wife, but say that in the atmosphere. Amen. Get behind me and say, your children won't do right. Get behind me and say that you don't live. Your thoughts are not right. Get behind me and say that. Because I know the truth. And I'm renewing my mind. And guess what? You can't stop me now. <laughs> I, got, whoo, I got happy right there. Get out of your chair for a minute. You can't stop me now. Look what God will do. I promise you, he'll bless your life if you let him. And somebody here this morning need that paradigm shift. You need that, that new excitement in your life. And I promise you, when you take authority in Jesus Christ, you know, the word of God says it like this. He says, you have authority to trample over snakes and scorpions. That means every poisonous and harmful thing in your life, you got the power to say, get out, go away. You can't live here anymore. Get behind me, Satan. I guess somebody say that this morning. Get behind me, Satan. 
Y'all scared to say it, ain't you? Get behind me, Satan. Uh-huh. See, you just took your life back right then. When you told the devil, get away from me, what the Bible says, resist the devil, and he shall what? Oh, boy. That's good to my soul. That's a paradigm shift right there. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God wants a newness for you. And every week I come here, that's what I want to challenge you with. Because there's moments of us, we feel dead inside. We feel like we're drowning in life. We feel like we're lonely and all. We don't have nothing else to look for. And God says, you have so much more. There's so much greatness for you. And friend, it is no secret what God can do. I tell y'all, I, I, we got to get this t-shirt, y'all. God has a plan. He has a plan. Look at somebody who ain't scared of COVID and tell them he has a plan. God has a plan. Oh, Pastor Chris, we don't talk in church. Well, you're going to learn today. <laughs> God has a plan. Because we, see, I'm training y'all for out there. Because you're supposed to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And if y'all can't talk to each other in church, how are you going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? And tell me, I love Jesus, but don't want to lead nobody to Jesus. Why be stingy with the Jesus you got? Huh? I ain't stingy with it. Y'all can't hadn't figured that out yet. Because the joy I have, I want others to experience it. Because if they get joy, they won't mess with you. Let that be a help for you. If they feel the love and joy, then something in their heart will change them. They won't get on your nerves no more. Share Jesus with them. You want people to change? Share Jesus with them. Stop fussing with them. Give them Jesus. Y'all sitting there arguing all night and going to sleep mad. Give them Jesus. They start fussing. Oh, you getting on my nerve. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch their heart. Oh, watch how I tell you what you praying for. And then you know what? I'm so sorry. I, I love you. <laughs> Y'all wasting your time arguing. What are they going to do? Because everybody want to be right. It ain't going to do nothing. So you just, <laughs> you're going to listen to me. You're going to laugh now. Okay. And you're going to listen to me too. And everybody want to be right. You don't went to your corner. Ding, ding, ding. Next time. <laughs> Love on them and give them Jesus and watch what they do. Somebody need that this morning. Let's stand together. And here I, today, what is your response to the word of God? Maybe God has challenged you to give your life to him. Or maybe he's saying, be a part of this church so you can grow and be all that God wants you to be. Or maybe today you need prayer and say, Pastor, I need you to pray with me that I can get my paradigm shift. As we sing our hymn of response, it is no secret what God can do. The words will be on the screen for us. I invite you to sing with uplifting voices, but then make your response however God leads you. And if you want me to pray with you, you can come sit on the front pew and we'll pray for you and ask God's blessing on you. Let's sing together. just like he's done it for me. Because God has a plan. Just allow him to shift your life and what, watch what God will do for you. Take that word in your heart today and I pray that today's sermon was a blessing to you that you will feast upon that and grow in Christ Jesus. That's what he wants for you. Guess what, friends? I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. I'm telling you, and I mean that with all my heart. You may be tired of my loud self, but I'm going to tell you what, that loud self going to stick in your heart because I love you. And every time you have a negative part, a part of your life, I hope my little face jumps in your mind <laughs> and say, God has a plan. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So every time you get mad or upset, whoop, there's Pastor Chris.
God has a plan. <laughs> That's a good commercial right there. Amen. <laughs> so I want you to know God loves you, friends. And we live in a world that's just full of chaos and mess. And we need to spread this joy of the gospel with everybody. Because I'm telling you, he's amazing, God, and I love him. So uh, I still got y'all in time out to go to Golden Corral and be the first in line. Amen. <laughs> I know some of y'all, ooh, why are we at 10 o'clock? I wish we was at 11. But guess what? You get to get to the restaurants first. Amen. Amen. So look at that incentive. Amen. So I love all of you, and I look forward to next week. Invite someone with you. Say, come experience this joy that we experience every week through Jesus Christ. Not Pastor Chris, but through Jesus. Because if I didn't have God in me, you wouldn't experience that joy. You got It's got to be God that does it. And I pray you'll be blessed to that. I love you and I praise God for you. Go in that peace of Jesus Christ. Let's sing our closing song. Bless me, the time that finds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of Friends, you have that orange Tennessee Titan card. Amen. And I want you to fill that out where God is leading you to serve. Don't leave here without filling that out. I hope God spoke to you and gave you a paradigm shift about serving in the church. And if you will, place that in the brown basket there and make your commitment. And once you place it in that basket, I want you to say in your heart, God, lead me as I help lead others. Amen. We're loving God and loving people. Y'all ain't going to never forget that mission. Amen. 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 God bless you and keep you. Thank you.